My name is Caroline Lee and I'm a local potter working in the Rotherham area. Today we are in Elsica Heritage Centre at a craft fair and I'm going to be demonstrating today how to make a green man. First of all, um, I take some stoneware clay and I roll out a large slab with a rolling pin. Um, the clay that I'm using today is rather wet because I threw with it recently and I've just recycled it. So I have kneaded it up today using a method called bull's head kneading. Uh, and the reason it's called that is because when you knead it with your hands, the impression of your hands leaves what looks like the eyes of the bull and the bull's head in fact. And then I'll roll that clay out using a rolling pin and two rolling guides and the rolling guides are there to stop your clay from getting too thin and also to make sure that you have a nice even piece of clay once you've rolled it out. And I also have on the table a rolling mat which stops the clay from sticking to the table. Once I've rolled out the clay I lay it onto the uh, newspaper former and then I will cut round to make a kind of shell uh, for, on which the leaves will be attached. Take that away. After that, I take locally collected leaves such as oak, uh, sycamore, ivy, uh, sweet chestnut, and I roll the underside of the leaves, place it underside down into the clay and that leaves the pattern of the leaf, the shape of the leaf and also the veins of the leaf in the clay. Then I cut each leaf out uh, and lay them on a board. Um, after I've got enough pieces what I'll do is I'll play around with them uh, to make an arrangement that looks good around the particular shape of green man form that I've got that day. Today I've got a oval shaped former. I'm going to make an oval shaped green man but generally I make round or oval shapes um, and green ladies. To attach the leaves what I do is I, I take the leaf, turn it over and then I use a comb type tool to scratch into the clay uh, and I'll also have to scratch onto the clay where the leaf is to be joined as well uh, and then I will apply some joining slip which is just a mixture of the clay that I'm using for that particular project and water. And I'll apply that to both pieces to be joined and then press the leaf onto the back piece um, firmly but not too firmly that you would lose the leaf vein pattern. I always start by putting the outer uh, row of leaves, that would be the leaves that would be attached to the wall on first. Um, and then I work upwards uh, and forwards towards the facial features like the eyes, nose and mouth which take a little bit more time, a bit more fiddly. Uh, usually it takes me about an hour to get the first layer of leaves on and then I will start doing the facial features um, and then attach the, la the later leaves on all in one go once I've decided on their arrangement. attached all the leaves and done all the features I go around the whole piece with a damp brush and then what I do is I take a tool and I put in any leaf marks that I've missed because I tend to lose definition with fiddling around with it so I'll dip my brush into the water and then brush off any crumbs or any untidy bits to, to make it perhaps the areas between the leaf veins a bit smoother to tidy it all up ensure there's no sharp edges perhaps that might cut someday if, if they handle the piece. It's just a general tidying up process. After that I would leave the, the clay piece to dry slowly. So I would cover it over with a large sheet of polythene uh, and let it dry out over perhaps uh, a couple of weeks. But whilst it's drying out what I would do is slide it forward, take out the newspaper former and then attach two balls of clay behind, round about, I guess, where ears would be, um, just above the eyes. And that forms the hanging device 
for most of my green then, especially the heavier ones. We like to, to do the hanging devices that way. The lighter ones, uh, the green ladies for example, have holes through the clay right through there and they have decorative copper wiring. But the heavy ones need a more sturdy wire uh, and are wired up from, from behind. So you've got a totally invisible wiring system. After maybe about two weeks, once the piece is, is bone dry, I will put it into my electric kiln and fire it to 1000 degrees centigrade. Um, that takes about 10 hours to fire it to its top temperature and then it cools down very slowly which takes more than a day. So the piece is, the piece is actually in the kiln for a couple of days. When it's properly cool, I'll take it out of the kiln and apply a decorative finish to it which may be red iron oxide or a stoneware glaze or in the case of a green lady it might be that I do a, a, an acrylic finish for indoors. And then in the case of the stoneware pieces or any other glazed pieces, they go back into the kiln for another firing, um, for the glaze firing, which for me is mostly 1260 degrees centigrade. And that has the effect of vitrifying the clay, so the clay can't take on any more water, so it should be frostproof. And we have tested our pieces outdoors and we haven't had any problems to date. Here ends today's lesson. <laughs>